Let's get some thoughts now from our political strategist with a small C conservative band, Elise Mills. She's sitting there in our studio in Vancouver. So you watch a bit of that uh, chat with uh, Adrian Dix. He is the front runner and he's very much playing the front runner. You do try and press him on some things. And everybody was today at the radio interviews, in, in op-ed columns. For a little more details, uh, he keeps just coming back to the boilerplate line. He does. And the question I was hoping you were going to ask him, uh, David, was if he knew what the average weekly salary was for a resource sector uh, em employee. And the answer is 1900 He keeps touting this BC film and arts and entertainment and technology tax credit and how that's going to raise people out of poverty. Do you want to know what the average weekly wage is? 700 So there is a huge discrepancy. And this is why I'm, I'm actually quite confused as to why uh, Adrian Dix wouldn't want to have a more balanced approach to energy, resource development, and environmental sustainability. It seems a little odd to me. Well, and this is the thing. Uh, when we first talked to Adrian Dix about five, four or five months ago, uh, he talked a lot about the platform will be balanced one step at a time. He didn't want to seem too radical. And yet, over the last week, I think you, a lot of people are saying, wait a minute, uh, it's shifting too far the balance towards environmental protection, if you want to call it that. And there isn't the balance on, well, what resource developments are going to go ahead. No Site C Dam, mining projects will be delayed, energy projects will be delayed all up and down uh, BC. The, the people against everything party is what they should rename themselves. I think that that's what they're, they're really pushing towards. Last week it was coal as well. Um, he really wants to shut down Vancouver's port. What I found curious about the direction he's taking on policy is he keeps referencing that he's so respectful of Alberta and respectful of their energy policies, but I think he's actually purposely got this all wrong. What he needs to do is look at national interests. Uh, we aren't silos. We can't separate each other. We do a huge amount of interprovincial trade. BC sends quite a bit of our resource out to Alberta by train, and they don't, they don't seem to complain too much. Um, I think British Columbians need to start asking themselves, or at least educating themselves, on the relationship we have in this country in natural resources and start asking some tough questions. The other thing I do want to get back to, though, is that uh, a lot of the callers that called in to CKNW today, where he was uh, doing a one-on-one -on -one with Bill Good, uh, it was really focused focused on that 2.8 or 2.9 uh, billion dollar spend he's put out there. Um, the, the numbers really don't add up, David, and he seems to be falling into that traditional territory that the BC Liberals have been trying to push before about him being a tax and spend NDP or, or socialist, and uh, he couldn't quite answer some of those questions as well. It seems odd that he's giving up uh, some very high value, uh, high paid, good pension plan resource jobs at, at a whim, and on a proposal he's not actually seen because it doesn't exist yet. There's a radio debate tomorrow. It's the first time the four leaders will have a chance to go head to head to head to head. Um, if you're Christy Clark, do you want to keep pushing debt free or do you want to start picking away at Dick's perhaps a bit more? Oh, I, if I was Christy Clark tomorrow, I'd, I'd hang up the debt-free campaign slogan and put on the jobs uh, uh, slogan and talk about exactly what we're talking about here today. Start mapping that out, create a, a through your words, creating a visual for British Columbians that are tuning in exactly what Dix's words have, have meant. Because I think voters must be absolutely conf confused with all the flip-flopping. I know I've got whiplash. I'm not sure what he supports. You know, uh, where does he want... Uh, the Kinder Morgan uh, imaginary proposal to, to go from. So she really needs to hammer in on those inconsistencies. Uh, I know Leonard Krogh apologized for that tweet where he talked about a review when Dick said there wasn't a review. But I think that's the beginning of the inconsistencies the NDP are having. John Horgan yesterday, you referenced that as well. I would. I, she's a very strong campaigner. The problem I have with the Premier, or with Christy Clark, is that she doesn't seem to be comfortable battling from that particular topic because I think the real reason is, David, she's still hoping NDPers that are, or people that are wavering and maybe thinking about voting NDP will come to her if she seems a little softer on uh, energy resource development in this province. Oh, you might be right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow and we'll chat about it then. Elise Mills, thank you so much Thanks, for joining David. us.